The following material may not be suitable for small children, some adults, a few senior citizens, many farm animals, and most household appliances. Flashlight. Where is that coming from anyway? Three lights. I have to hold two. Very embarrassing. No money. Can you tell this is no money? Talk to stupid. I have no shoes. No pants. Do I look all right? Flashlight. No tie. This is not called stand up flashlight. Am I? I'm a boy. Am I here? Am I on? Oh, ow. Uh, right now, a very funny woman up first here for you on Stand Up Spotlight, a good friend of mine, Newsweek magazine, named her one of the top five comedians in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Adrienne Tausch. Uh, this is a designer outfit. Pierre Cartoon did this for me. I gotta get a new bra, though. This ace bandage is killing me. God. Okay. Well, it's a year and a week since I stopped smoking cigarettes, and I am only 3,500 pounds heavier than when I started. I, I had to stop, though. I had a really loud cough. They asked me to leave a Van Halen concert, you know, so... And uh, if you don't laugh hard, that's okay. I'm used to no response. I've been married. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At the beginning, I was fabulous in the beginning. It's very sexy in the beginning. Ooh, let's do it over here. <laughs> Run the tub. Get out the trapeze. <laughs> I'm wearing a little shorty nightgown. I want some Perrier, honey. <laughs> a couple of months later, I'm okay, I'm wearing a hefty bag. <laughs> you didn't call today. Is it me, honey? Maybe. <laughs> Him too, of course. The ex, fabulous in the beginning. Jogging outfit, Adidas, headband, going for the paper there. <laughs> Couple months later, he didn't care. He's wearing shorts up to here. And he has those rubber thong sandals on. You know those babies? And he's walking like this. Idiot! Cut the string. The sandals will separate. <laughs> What are you wearing glasses for? You're in show business. Somebody says, what are you wearing glasses for? You're in show... I'm blind. <laughs> I need to get around. I can't afford to travel with a dog. So, um... Why don't you get frames to match your face? They don't make frames with large pores. Get off my back. You gotta be very brave to wear glasses. Do you know that? Because if you hold your head up at the wrong angle to the sun, you can set fire to your face. I don't know. But you can burn ants with them. So there's a lot of things that you can do. As far as there's a table over here with six people wearing glasses. Looks like an ice cube tray. It's hysterical. Uh, no offense. Uh, I actually like my glasses because they hide some of the lines around my eyes. See? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I figure as I get older, I'll get body glasses. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that coming down the street? A giant aquarium? What is that? But I, I'm not afraid of getting older because I have no choice. <laughs> you do get up one morning and you look in the mirror and I look like I'd gotten pardoned one minute after they threw the switch. It's like, whoa, the ego has landed. And I'm not afraid of menopause, though. I'm afraid of menos stop. That's what I'm afraid of. Right, because then... Over, over. But you see ladies on television, older ladies on television, soap opera stars are fabulously gorgeous, older women, but they only have to be gorgeous for five minutes at a time. Because then if something falls off, they stop the tape, they fill it in, and they go back, right? Five minutes? I could hold it in for five minutes. I'd have small children holding my skin behind my head for five minutes. <laughs> and I like younger guys, always liked younger guys. <laughs> Not six, don't look at me like... <laughs> They don't have their little mittens still attached to their little sleeves. <laughs> Certainly not when they leave. <laughs> Come here, young man. Want to see something? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, you learn a lot going out with younger guys. I mean, I, I know what wine goes with peanut butter now, so... <laughs> and, uh... My boyfriend is, is younger than I am, but so are the four outer planets. <laughs> 
And we, we live in Finn, that's a suburb of the city. Um, he is a huge sports fan, but I mean huge. He will watch billiard wrestling. He'll watch, and I love it, I love it. He could watch 20 hours of games on TV a day. Who cares, he's home. <laughs> he's not out molesting a woman with a bigger mind. So, now baseball's his favorite absolute favorite sport. And I understand baseball. I grew up with it. My mom leads the league in sacrifice. So, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> and he loved, but he loves baseball so much. He really does. He has to think about sex to keep himself from reading the box scores. I mean, it's really a sickness. And there's, you know what he does? He falls asleep during every game. Is that adorable? Is that adorable? Yeah, five innings into the game, I hear. <laughs> You know what I do? While he's snoring and the game is still on, I go right up in his ear and I do this. <laughs> <laughs> Who hit that? Honey, honey! Oh, I don't know. Is this somebody hit something? <laughs> <laughs> football is my favorite. I love football. I learned great stuff about football from the boyfriend. Dick Butkus' his name backwards is Suck Tub Kid. <laughs> It's always the guy doing that. Yeah, she's right. Look at that. S U K. I always know it's football season in our house because after we make love, the boyfriend does this. That was good. <laughs> Actually, I like the extra point. <laughs> Last night, some guy yelled up, "What about reverse angle?" Whoa! whoa. <laughs> I really got to be liquored up for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Flix is the show about Hollywood. Okay, boys, let's go. Flix is talk. It's a mood. But not all talk. And action. Flix goes behind the scenes and in front of the camera to get the real story. Those are great scripts. Flix is the insider's half hour on what's happening, where everything is happening. Don't miss it. This week, Avalon with stars Aiden Quinn, Elizabeth Perkins, and director Barry Levinson. With celebrity guest Gabriel Byrne, star of Miller's Crossing. This Friday at 11.30, Saturday at 1, only on VH1. Native Americans believe there's spiritual energy here. Do you? Well, let's say I'm intrigued with mystic places from my reading. How about you? Have ben you Randall to on Time Life series, Mysteries of the Unknown. Hmm, mystic places. Not my thing, but it looks like you're into it. I'm beginning to think these mystic places do have special powers, like the Arizona-California desert. What's mystic about that? Read the book. Read about 500-year-old desert figures. Why were they drawn? Read the book. Read about the strange voyage of Cleopatra's 68-foot pillar. What happened? Read the book. Call now. Read Mystic Places free for 10 days. Keep it for $12.99. Other volumes will follow about every other month. Read them and then make up your own mind. Now I'm getting psyched up. Then why not get tickets for the Sacred Earth Tour? Oh, we'll get the tickets. And the books. From Linda Ronstadt. Ronstadt. VH1, the greatest hits of music video. Why am I here? We're back! Hi! Hi! I'm your host, Wilma Flintstone. So nice to have you here. So folks, I want to tell you, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit excited. I lost three pounds. Thanks. Thanks a lot. A lot. I struggle my whole life with weight. I'm not even on a diet program, I'm just doing it myself because I'm sick of these diet places like Weight Watchers. All right, it works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for me. Let me explain the Weight Watchers program to you folks. All right, you go once a week to Weight Watchers. You then have six days on your own 
to deal with your 200 optional calories. <laughs> That's 200 calories any way you like them. I would always have two light beers, which is perfectly legal. I'm still light, 98 calories each. Only problem is after two beers, who cares about Weight Watchers? <laughs> Two beers, I'm at some diner going, can I have a drink of salad, please? <laughs> they say you have to work out to lose weight. Is that true? Is that true? You're thin. Is it true? You don't work out? And you're that thin? You walk? That's working out, walk. That's the pep step in Weight Watchers. The pep step. <laughs> I go to aerobics. Aerobics really helps if you want to lose weight, providing that you hate your instructor. And uh, don't worry, they're very easy to hate. My instructor is five foot six, 98 pounds. Her name is Kit. <laughs> When Kim works out with us beginners, she has to wear little wrists and ankle weights so she can work up a sweat. <laughs> That's the cutest thing you've ever heard. Then she likes to talk to us during aerobics. Cause as you ladies know, when you are in the perfect aerobic state, you should be able to converse freely. One and two, and don't forget to breathe and push it out and back. And feel the burn girls want to do it. One and two, and how you doing, Rosie? I hate your guts. You're super skinny. Which one don't you die? Routine. They deserve it too. They deserve it. They have a nerve to tell a gym full of sweaty people, don't forget to breathe. Does anyone need this piece of advice? What am I gonna drop dead on the gym floor? What happened to Rosie? I don't know. Maybe she forgot to breathe. Well, damn it, kid, can't you remind her? We can't have the chubby women breathing on their own. You have to tell them. If you guys see kid, kick her for me. Um, we have a very funny guy coming up here, very funny and uh, very, very good looking. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Rich Ramirez. <laughs> All right, oh, great to be here. What's happening, guys? All right, good, good. I'm Puerto Rican. Any Puerto Ricans in the audience? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> I figured I'd tell you I'm Puerto Rican because I know as soon as I got up on stage, you guys took one look at me and you said, wow, that guy look like an Indian or a terrorist. <laughs> Right? Like if you and I were on line to catch a plane, you take one look at me, you say, nah, that's all right, let him go, I'll catch the next one. <laughs> Don't ever travel World Airways, that is the cheapest airline in the world. It took me four hours to leave the ground out of Newark International Airport. Finally, we started moving, I'm thinking we're on the runway. No, we're paying tolls on the turnpike. <laughs> Pilots asking me for change. I mean, what you mean I got change, eh? And I'm scared of dying in a plane crash, that's one of my worst fears. You know who the fearless travelers are? I gotta give them a lot of credit. The Japanese people. Japanese people aren't scared of a thing. They could be on a plane heading home and all of a sudden the plane is being hijacked and they hear over the PA system, hello, this is Manolo, your new pilot. We're gonna be landing in Havana, Cuba in about 10, 15 minutes. As soon as I find the manual somewhere around here. And the Japanese people, they've just got one question. It's like, oh, anybody got an extra film? It's unexpected, you know. You got a brochure, Mr. Pirate. Brochure, you know, picture, picture, more picture. No, bummer. But you got to give Japanese people credit. They're very creative when it comes to foods, especially. They invented sushi. What is sushi, ma'am? Raw fish. Big deal. You know who I think invented that? A pissed off Japanese chef. Yeah, somebody came by, ordered fried fish. He wasn't in the mood. He was like, oh, okay, no, here you go. No, I'm not cooking no more. No, I got burned, look a finger, that's a boo-boo. Look at that, no, ready for you, table for two, out of here now. And you gotta be careful because all the major international airports have electronic revolving door systems now that are dangerous. You guys seen this? It's got an electronic eye that detects a body mass coming toward it. And as it does, it starts to rotate automatically. The only problem is, the more people that come toward it, the faster it goes. <laughs> After a while, it's flinging people out of there. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Quick, that's grandma, grab the net. <laughs> Stay there. But modern technology can be a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun with my answer machine. I left a real cute rap message. I'd like to do it for you. Clap your hands, everybody. Something like this. 
I'm so glad you called. I'm sorry I'm not here. I'm either doing a show or somewhere having a beer. I may be occupied or just can't come to the phone. So please leave a brief message at the sound of the tone. Let's see. And I'm having a lot of fun with it too because for some reason or other, it seems to force people that call me to leave rap messages back. <laughs> yeah, my mom's left a real cute one. Hers is like, hello, son, how are you? <laughs> your mama say hello and your papa does too. <laughs> There's a lot of construction, a lot of construction going on in Manhattan and not in New Jersey and stuff. But have you guys ever noticed out of all these construction workers, there is no such thing as a Chinese construction worker? No, I was curious too. I came up to a Chinese guy and said, hey, how come uh, none of you guys are construction workers, man? Chinese guy goes, oh, no. Uh, no, so sorry. After we built a great wall, we up to here with a brick. <laughs> okay, you guys been great. Thanks a lot. Good night. weeks only, VH1 takes a break from the hits to present two shows for one hour of comedy. Where is Alan Funt? They'll never get me on Candid Camera. Smile! Candid Camera's on VH1 every night with Sunday, right after Stand Up Spotlight with Rosie O'Donnell. Am I on TV yet or what? Here's some fun. VH1 Stand Up Spotlight and the classic Candid Camera for eight weeks only, Monday through Thursday at 10, Friday and Saturday at 11, only on VH1. Stop, look, and listen at Camelot Music. Bruce Springsteen, Barbara Streisand, Billy Joel, Willie Nelson. Look for the nice price sticker and save on CDs and cassettes. Get hit music from The Bangles, Simon and Garfunkel, Aerosmith, and more. Choose from hundreds of low price titles and get superstar CDs and cassettes at a super nice price. presents the hell that is war. Ten o'clock. I didn't join this man's name to get up before noon. As dramatic as battle make... itself, it's McHale's Navy. I'm going to turn in my bars. Any of you guys see my bars? Watch McHale and his men face their mortal enemies and see them battle the madman of Taratupa. You'll never get away with this, McHale. My widow will track you down to the end of the earth. McHale's Navy, Monday through Thursday at 11.30 on Ha, the TV comedy network. It happened to this man, a dream that tragically came true, a dream of his own assassination. His name was Abraham Lincoln. It happened to a soldier, evidence that made him positive that he had lived before, centuries ago. The soldier was George S. Patton, and it may have happened to you, because two out of three Americans believe that they've had a brush with the unknown. What does it all mean? Now there's a new library to help you find your own answers, mysteries of the unknown from Time Life Books where you'll explore every aspect of the unexplained and meet the people who experienced it. Like this man, who was positive that he had momentarily left his own body. His name? Charles A. Lindbergh. Call now for your trial volume, because the next experience could be yours. To order Mystic Places, call 1-800-243-0200. Examine it for 10 days. Keep it and pay just $12.99 plus shipping and handling. Keep only the ones you want. Cancel anytime. Call 1-800-243-0200. We were sitting on the couch in front of the TV. My lips were pressed to hers. It was the music. It was the video. I don't know. We fell in love. I should be getting more money for this. I really should. We're back. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Dionne Warwick. Right now. I'm a professional. He's going to be the new morning guy on VH1. Look for him, the very funny Mr. Vic Dunlop.
didn't communicate with anybody. I went to college, eight years junior college, majored in registration. I showed up. I want to register. Uh, communications major, huh? Communicate. Have you been watching the news? I swear to God, what is wrong with this country? The news is going crazy. Oliver North, finally, that trial is over. Finished. We should let Judge Wapner decide that one. I'm serious. 30 minutes would have been over. Doug Llewellyn would have been interviewing him. There's too much stuff happening. What's his name? Tim Baker. <laughs> he got all, he better get used to that music, right? <laughs> And Tammy says she's going to wait for him. <laughs> Can you imagine her waiting for 120 years? She is going to be ugly. I'm talking pit bulls won't even attack her. Man. And, and the eyelashes, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. I was talking to Jesus. I was. I was. I swear to God. Jesus. He called my name. He did, sir. He did. While I was sleeping. I was sleeping. And I just woke right up. And I looked up at the Lord. And I began to pray. I don't understand this. Jim Baker made $200 million. Why didn't he give her a million bucks to fix her face? Fix the pig's face. I can't believe it. 200 million. And then he claims he lost his money. Did you hear that? I can't find my wallet. Lost the Rolls Royce, too. Lost the car for a week. How do you lose a car? Well, Tammy must have been driving, right? <laughs> I can explain, Jimbo. I was driving down the street, and Jesus, he just cut in front of me. So I swerved to the left and I swerved to the right, but my eyelashes are smacking the hell out of me. I'm glad somebody was. I'm not bitter about religion. Please don't get me wrong. Oh, I have religion. 13 years Catholic school. Yeah. 13 damn years. I'm okay now, though. Nothing happened to me. <laughs> oh, gosh. How many Catholics here tonight? Come on, be honest. Yeah. All right. This is for the Catholics in the audience. Time to make Hey, you know the word. Sing it with me. The Polish folk. You okay, sir? That hurt you more, didn't it? He said, you're going, ow, ow, ow. Oh, ow, ow. Thirteen years. Uh, anybody go to Catholic school? Yeah. You did, young lady? Yeah. What, what was the name of your school? Holy Family. Holy Family. You can't mistake that, can you? That's a whole bunch of them together. Yeah, yeah. I asked a girl that question last night at a show. I said, what is the name of your school? She went, Annunciation? I said, excuse me, what is the name of your school? I went to our lady of the most vicious blood. I'm talking biker nuns, you know. Sister 
Mary Bush. <laughs> Tattoos on their arms. <laughs> Born to raise Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> and they never pointed like this. I always hooked them, didn't they? Yeah, come here, you. I suppose they could do this. Ow, ow, ow. <sighs> How long were you in for? Hi, <laughs> you all the way. You okay? <laughs> no knuckles. I'm huh? here. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Fine. Yeah. Catholic school. Name of the father and the son. <laughs> I went 13 years. My parents kept me an extra year just to piss me off. 13 years, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever get Catholic flashbacks? Hey, I'm serious. Somebody hands me a ruler. Huh? Ah! Ah! Oh, jeez, I thought you were a nun. <laughs> hey, every Friday I go out looking for meat. <laughs> I hate this shit. <laughs> I still drive with my little plastic Jesus on my car and my dashboard. Oh, I remember the song. Do you remember that one? I don't care if it rains or freezes as long as I got my plastic Jesus. <laughs> you know, Catholics thought they could drive any way they wanted. You know? <laughs> Come on, Jesus! You drive! Pull you over with you. Hey, hey, he was driving, officer. <laughs> I hate to drive. It's my pet peeve. It is, because I'm getting old. You know you're getting old when you leave your blinker on for seven blocks. <laughs> Ten blocks are Chinese. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> Can't hey, yell at them. They're too damn cute. <laughs> that makes you want to order. Hey, you son of egg rolls. <laughs> Don't you love these little lights? I wish I had a pencil. We could yeah, mark the dots. Maybe not. I'll tell you what, next time you're driving down the street, cops pull you over. And they will. It's their job. Sirens are blaring, lights are flashing, people are looking out the window to see if they know you. This happens to you by yourself at Twilight Zone tape. Play this tape real loud. Near, 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 near. Everybody, help me out. Near, 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 near. Then put these on. Near, near, near. By the time the cop pulls you over, and believe me, he will, before he gets to your window, you make sure you're sitting in the passenger seat. You guys have been great. We grew up with the show for the whole family, while everyone else watched some old guy in a suit trade bad jokes with a large family of Latvian acrobats. A troop of Taiwanese teacup jugglers and a shy mouse from Italy, we suffered waiting for the good part. Turn that down. It's giving me a headache. Now there's my generation. My generation, a half hour of just the good parts. Your favorite oldies, only on VH1. Hello, I'm Peter Noon, your host. Watch My Generation at this time. I want to hold your hand. The VH1 Welcome Home Sweepstakes. $250,000 towards the house of your dreams is finally a reality for this lucky winner. 